next focus is to divide rational expressions. And again, remembering they behave like fractions, please remember that in arithmetic, when you divide a fraction, you take and multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. Some people use the phrase skip. In other words, don't do anything to this fraction. Just repeat it. So skip it, flip, and multiply. So many people use that, skip, flip, and multiply. And now we're back to multiplication, so I'm not going to spend much time on this topic. Um, I just removed the common factors. So 7 goes in here once and in here twice, and the answer to this problem is 6 over 5. Let's go ahead and do one with variables. So I like to always uh, illustrate with um, arithmetic. But this is just monomials, so no factoring required. So what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to write it right here. I'm going to skip. In other words, just copy this fraction down. I'm going to flip this one. And I'm going to multiply now by the reciprocal of this. If I can remove some common numerical factors, I'll do that first. I tend to kind of focus on that. And it just looks faster or more efficient if I would take the 8 out of here once and the 8 out of here twice. Oh, look, there's a 3 that go into each of those. So 3 goes into here once and into there twice. Those are just numbers. They just behave that way. So you reduce them in that, in that regard. Um, I'm, I tend to not reduce the variable factors yet. This b to the first over that b to the fifth would be b to the fourth downstairs. I subtract their exponents. Um, if I do that from top to bottom, I have b to the minus 4 upstairs, and then I move it downstairs as b to the positive 4. I'm not going to bother doing that yet. I want you to see what you could do with this. So I'm going to go 2 times 2 is 4, and a to the 7th, and then b to the 1st in the numerator. A lot of people find this a little bit easier. And then down here I have a 1, and a cubed b to the 5th. So I'm going to put here a cubed b to the 5th. And so, I'm just going to neaten that up a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and say, oh geez, notice here that you could subtract those exponents when you divide because the bases are alike. So a to the fourth upstairs. So I have a four, a to the fourth upstairs. You could, please remember, you could subtract these upside down order. And if you do, then your answer is downstairs. So five minus one is four. Because I started right here, my result is downstairs. Picture it, too. Picture writing that out five times. And you only have one up there, so you remove one of the Bs that you have down here, so you have four Bs left, or B to the fourth. I'm all done. Um, we call this division, but we end up doing just a lot of factoring. So let's see. Let's take a look at... Take a look at this problem. I tend to, with the division problem, factor everything first and then I flip the second fraction. So I go ahead and write the fact that this is going to be a y plus 3 and a y minus 3. And then I can't factor that. That's y times y. This has got a greatest common factor in it. It's y to the fourth. I'm going to pull that out. So when I pull that out, I need a y right there. y to the fourth times y to the first is that y to the fifth. And I need a 3 right here. And now I'm ready to rewrite the problem. So the first fraction, I just rewrite it as is. So it's y plus 3, y minus 3, over the y squared. And then I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of this. So the y plus 2 is going upstairs. It is 1 times that y plus 2. I'm just going to go ahead and write it like that. And then I have y to the fourth downstairs and that y plus 3. And now I can start removing common factors. Wow, not much here. Just this and this. They're equal to 1. I don't see anything else. I'm going to have to put those together and call them y to the 6th because when I multiply, I add their exponents. And upstairs, I have y minus 3 as a binomial and the y plus 2. You know, division problem, we say we're multiplying. 
but we don't bother to foil this. It seems it's a real uncomfortable for some people, but you don't need to call this y squared plus 2y minus 3y minus 6 and then collect your like terms. We leave it in its factored form. So no multiplying, no bother, except for this y to the second times y to the fourth. We do call that y to the sixth. One more problem with the division problem. Even though it's a division problem, I tend to factor everything first and then flip that one after the fact. So always look for the greatest common factor. So this one's got a 5 in it. And this one's got a 10 in it. I know that I need to do some more work up there. I know that I need to factor that trinomial into the product of two binomials. Let's go ahead and finish this work and write it down here. So I have a 5 in that numerator. And that trinomial will have an x in the front of each of the binomials. And I'm looking for two numbers whose product is a negative 6. So one's got to have a plus sign, and one's got to have a minus sign. The 3 and 2 that I'm probably going to use, they have to add to be this 1 right there. So I better make this a positive 3 and a minus 2, so that they add to be that positive 1. And then in this denominator, I have 10 times the x plus 3. So there is the first fraction fully taken care of. Over here I have a 2 to get out. So that's going to be 2 times x squared minus 4. And that needs to be factored again into x plus 2 and x minus 2. I like to kind of finish that one up because then I'm going to flip it down here. The greatest common factor in this one is a 6, so let's get a 6 out. Oh, geez, and now I'm wondering if that trinomial will factor. I wonder if there's two numbers whose product is 9 and adds to be 3. Oh, yeah, it's a 3 and a 3. Don't forget your 6 right here. This is the factored form of this denominator. Getting a little tight in here. I have to multiply it by the reciprocal of this. The top and the bottom are its factored form. So this denominator goes upstairs in the numerator. So 6 times the x plus 3 and the x plus 3. And down here, 2 times the x plus 2 and the x minus 2. I think for, for looking back later, I'm just going to put a little curvy line here to show that I'm now working with that because everything's been factored and I have multiplied by the, the reciprocal. Now reduce. So I could take the x plus 3 here and here, or I could take it here and here. It's just easier to kind of see it right there. Let's see. I have an x minus 2 here and here. I always look at my binomials first before I look at my numerical factors. I always do those for some reason. Uh, I don't see any more binomials. I do see that that's going to reduce to 1 half. Those are just arithmetic fractions. And this is going to reduce. 2 goes into here once and into here three times. Hmm. Okay. I think I'm all set. 1 times 3 is 3. Down here I'm going to have 2 times 1 is 2. So it looks like I'm going to have a 3 upstairs and a 2 downstairs. As binomials go, I've got x plus 3 times x plus 3. Many people will write that as x plus 3, that quantity squared. It just saves them some lead, maybe a little bit of paper. And then finally, down here, I have my x plus 2. Boy, this was a messy problem to list the restrictions on the domain, but I'm going to try to talk to that, to that issue. In the original problem right here, x cannot equal a negative 3. In the original problem, this is a fraction that was given right there. Those values, x cannot equal a negative 3. Don't, don't be thinking, oh, look, I already got that, so I'm okay. But anyway, if there was something different there, I would have to take care of that. When I'm multiplying by the reciprocal, 
have to pay attention to those two denominators now also. So this one, x cannot equal a negative 2. And this one, x cannot equal a positive 2. Again, it doesn't matter that they are removed as a common factor. It's the original problem that I'm basing my restrictions on the domain. I think I caught everything, but with the division problem, you have to be very careful because it's the denominator here and the denominator there. And then when you flip it, the, what was the numerator is now the denominator, and those values that would cause us to divide by zero are restrictions as well. We're, we're done with division. We're going to move on to adding and subtracting rational expressions in our next clip.